Um, our guests today are uh, Arnie Gunderson from an organization called Fairwinds and Russell Lowe's, who's uh, I find, uh, done a lot of financial analyst work around um, the monetary parts of nuclear power. And Mr. Gunderson has also done uh, significant work in America, uh, uh, probably not just in America, given his background, uh, on safety issues around nuclear power. Um, Andrea Witte from Connecting the Dots may show up momentarily. Um, we thought it was uh, important to talk about, to bring up nuclear power, given uh, the events at Fukushima in Japan and um, how that might change uh, the tenor and context of the conversation, not only globally but, but in America, um, bringing forward a lot of issues that seem to be routinely suppressed, stun, uh, spun, or distorted uh, so that people uh, don't have a complete understanding of what's wrong with the financing, what's wrong with the safety. But then when it, it, it appears that this plant that they've been proposing and carrying forward in Georgia was moving forward as though Fukushima never happened. I thought, my God, how can this be? Let's have a conversation about this. Let's understand this. Let's get our arms around it. And so uh, Russell and Mr. Gunderson have been good enough uh, to come on the show with us and um, see see where how we can push this down the road. Uh, our call-in number is 529-3508. That's 529-3508. Mr. Gunderson, are you with us? Yes, I am. Hi. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Welcome. And and thank you for, very, I mean this very heartfelt, thank you very much for um, your good work. Uh, simply put, but not, not simply done. And Russell, yourself as well. Thank, thank you, you and welcome. Well, f well guys, um, what's your take? Did you have... It's not, it's not like I'm Pollyanna. I mean, I've had a ringside seat at the abyss for 30 years. But I still had some uh, hope that, given what happened at Fukushima, that uh, there would be some pause, maybe enough scales falling from the eyes so that some critical mass of judgment might occur to start changing some of these issues around safety and financing. Did you know? Did you guys at all have any any of those thoughts, or you're smart? You're, you're way smarter than me. Well, I, I I personally had thoughts that that America might slow down a little bit, but but not much hope for that. But what has been real help, hopeful and actually very productive is Germany has has right. said that they will shut down all of the rest of their nuclear plants, and they shut down a handful right after Fukushima occurred. And and now they're phasing out all the rest of them. Italy has resoundingly gone against their chief of state. I didn't and, know they and, did that. So they Italy vote. said, uh -huh. yeah, they they are stopping any any nuclear development. Brazil has has put everything on hold. Uh, so there are countries around the world that are doing this. There are nine countries in Europe that d are not are not nuclear powers that are are asking for a full cessation of nuclear power development in Europe. So so, so now Brazil, I'm trying to think what do Brazil and Germany have in common? They're far more energy independent than other countries like um uh what what Brazil does with fuel and then Germany to their credit has done so much in solar production. Well, Germany's becoming ind energy independent. independent and they, That's a relative term. Yeah, they just reached, they are occasionally reaching 20% of uh, their total energy output with solar at, at one instant. Right. But, but not 20% of total energy for the, for the day or right. the year. But that, uh, has to, it, ha that has to influence the probabilities on how decisions get made. Yes, um, but Arnie, how, how do you feel that, uh, the U.S. has reacted in this whole thing? Well, when I saw Fukushima uh, happen, I, I told my wife, I am I am personally not going to let this get covered up like right. the island and like Chernobyl. I'm just not going to do it. So we, at, at the at the expense of our of our business, of Fairwind's business, um, you know, we just dedicated the last year to Jeez. keeping public attention on this thing. If... if uh, if we had relied on the mainstream media, we would, you know, we would think that uh, uh, nuclear is absolutely right. safe. So, 
uh, you know, I, I guess I wasn't that we would try to cover this thing up. And um, I guess that, um, you know, my, my um, but, but like Russ said, I, I think uh, some countries have the message. And the one that's on the fence is Japan. You know, they're Amazing. trying to start two nukes up out of um, uh, perhaps 40 uh, of their 50. They had 54. They, they lost four in the, uh, in the accident at, at uh, Daiichi, one, two, three, four. They likely lost five and six. But then there's another um, about 10 that are certainly in jeopardy from the, the tsunami and also from the uh, uh, seismic issues. So perhaps Japan is down to 40 nuclear plants. Um, and, and they had 7 million people right to, um, right, to Congress, right to the diet saying, we don't want to do this. Uh, so I'm hopeful My that God. Japan, even though the, um, uh, the government doesn't seem to get the message yet. Well, didn't uh, Tokyo Electric, they're sort of metering out what the costs are, and uh, as part of how they're doing this cover-up, instead of saying it might be $500 billion to clean it up, it, they're saying, oh, it's going to be 30 and next week it's 33 and they're, uh, they're really misrepresenting stuff. Yeah, you know, the, it's, it's death by a, by a thousand right. uh, words as opposed to... They, they, if they were to admit to the people oh. that this is a half a trillion dollar problem, uh, they would have uh, rebellion on their hands. So it's better every three months to say, "Oh, it's uh, you know another twenty billion here and another twenty billion there." So that they but, got seven million letters, and people didn't know the whole story. My God. I mean, what's that the equivalent of in, the, in terms of the U.S. population? What is the, what is the Japanese population? Um, 140 million. So 140 million. All, more than twice. So it would be, it would be the equivalent of, of, these are not emails. These were hand signatures. My on, God. On documents. That's like 15 million letters. 14, yeah. 14 to wow. 20 million letters wow. being delivered to Congress. Yeah, we've never had that in no. the United States. We've never had that kind of participation, uh, protest, or any otherwise for any particular mm -hmm. issue, even for our national parks mm -hmm. or for, for anti-war or anything like that. Yeah, aren't, oh, well, well, let me ask a question, but then we're probably going to go have to go to break here for a minute, Arnie. Uh, in terms of the design of this facility at Fukushima and, and what it has in common with U.S. facilities, isn't, there a, a, isn't this a, the, one of the original designs where they stored the spent rods in a tower in the air, um, and they don't even ha they don't have a clue on how to remove it from the water because one, it bursts into flames when you remove it, and then um, it, then it becomes atmospheric. Yes, the, all four of the units that are in trouble, and twenty three similar ones in the United States. And Tw right, there's twenty three in the United States that are this design. Yes, that's correct. Wow. Now I, I've been told that. The, there might be, uh, I, I, want, I forget, I'm losing whether it's pounds or tons, but suffice it to say the amount of waste, nuclear waste in these towers in Japan is 25% of the volume that these towers at the, at the 23 plants that are built like it in America have inside them. There's four times more in the, oh, yeah. in the, in the U.S. plants. The Japanese were relatively conscientious, and they got most of the fuel out of their spent fuel pools. But the um, um, but the Americans keep their fuel fuel pools full, and the reason is money. It it costs um, a lot of money to empty the I fuel see. pool, and of course um, they don't uh, want to spend it because they want to protect the ratepayers. No, they want to protect the bottom line. Yeah, Arnie, we've got to go to break here. We'll be back in just a second. Five two nine thirty five zero eight. Okay, we are back. Our guests are Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds uh, Research Group and Russell Lowe's, who does uh, financial analysis, uh, analysis around uh, nuclear power plants, and Andrea Whitty from Connecting the Dados has just joined us. Uh, before we went to break, we were talking about the design of uh, Fukushima and that there's 23 plants in the United States that are built with basically the same blueprints. And the the tower where they store the waste in these is 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 a tower in the air, 
not made out of hardened concrete. Planes could fly into it. And they as yet have developed no way to remove the stuff from these towers uh, to put in some quote-unquote happy fantasy idea of a permanent location. And they keep in Fukushima, so, well, we'll, uh, we'll be ready in four years. Well, you have, don't have an idea. Don't you talk about four years? Yeah? Now, Mr. Gunderson just said that the plants in the United States, while the same design, that their towers, where the stuff is stored, hold 400% more volume than the ones in Japan. So that was our jumping off point. Um, you know, when the, when the pools are intact, you can remove the nuclear fuel. You do it all underwater and you put it into a very heavy shielded cask, and then it goes to something called dry cask storage. Fukushima had dry cast storage, and all the dry casts survived the earthquake and the tsunami. Mm -hmm. But in the U.S., we're not doing that. We're uh. keeping all the fuel in the pool, <laughs> which is uh, an enormous public health risk. Now so there, how, there long, some how, how many years' worth of fuel are stored in those since they, well, the, here they were built? In, in uh, Vermont here, the, the, the pool is solid. Uh, we've got 33 years there. They, they couldn't oh my kill it God. anymore. So they had to take some out. So we have some in dry cask, but still the fuel pool is full. And and the reason is that Entergy, the owner of the plant, it, it, it's not coming out of ratepayers. These guys are a merchant plant. They just make money on selling it into the grid. If they were to empty the pool, it would come out of their pocket, and they'd wind up with oh, easily a $100 million hit. But if they wait until the plant is decommissioned... That's just what I wanted to get at. Right. Ah, if right. they wait until the plant is shut down for good, then it comes out of the decommissioning fund. Oh, my and, God. And it, another party pays for it. So, you know, back to the, 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 the corporate scheme, modus operandi of externalizing your overhead. Not only do they want profits, which are, well, profits are okay, but it's the way they maximize their profits by externalizing their overhead. I mean, the, the plant in Georgia and many of these other plants, if something goes wrong, the taxpayers pay for it. These guys aren't liable or uh, responsible financially for the consequences of their decisions. And so, uh, I mean, it's like, you know, they want to build a hotel in downtown Tucson, but when you read the contract and you see that, oh, no, they want the taxpayers to be responsible if the room night occupancy isn't enough. And same thing with the happy fantasy for the arena. You read the contract and, oh, it's the taxpayers who are on the hook. So this is like modus operandi trick number three that no matter what the industry, these guys try and put on the American population. Well, on top of that, in the N Nuclear Regulatory Commission has allowed a number of nuclear reactors to be to be spun off into LLCs or limited liability companies, and if those companies go under, which is very likely, the taxpayer will be footing the bill for the vast majority of the decommissioning of these plants, and we're talking like a billion dollars per reactor or more. So uh, this is a, this LLC thing is just a streamlined way it's a, to create the it's, externalization of the of the cost. It's a shell game. It's a shell game. Mm -hmm. Yes, and and so it, so you would think we'd be slowing down. That was your original yeah. like hypothesis, right. you know, that you presented at the beginning of the program. Uh, but instead, we're promoting more. Adi we're pr 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 promoting additional reactors. We have the Vogel plants. Uh, we have we have other plants that are being planned, and the Vogel plant uh, just recently got a loan fee offered to it by the DOE, the Department of Energy, for 0.2 percent to 0.63 percent, somewhere in there. So when you go to buy a car, or when you go to buy a house, or a student or loan, you get a student loan, you pay a couple points or a few points on that loan, at least one point. The, this this massive plant, which the Congressional Budget Office has said has a 50% chance of default or higher, uh, uh, is getting a, a loan fee of 0.2 to percent You couldn't get a loan on a house if they thought you were, uh, there was a 50% chance you couldn't make yeah. the payments. No, well, that's what the... But see, the Russell, I think also. these guys are getting screwed. That's not mm -hmm. fair. Mm -hmm. well, they could have gone to the Federal Reserve and gotten it for nothing. 
they're, well, I, they're, they're making them pay something? I can't even believe that. That is ultimately their plan. Their, their ultimate plan is to get uh, the U.S. government 